Hi there. Today I'm going to share with you one of the most underused yet so simple ClickUp feature. Today we're going to talk about ClickUp Teams and how you can use them to leverage the teams you have in your company, in your business, and speed up sharing your tasks, creating templates, notifying your team, or having filters on different dashboards and views. With ClickUp Teams, you can make your internal communication so much faster because if someone arrives or leaves your business and your company, all you have to do is add them or remove them from the team and everything else that underlying in ClickUp will be reflected to them. So I'm gonna share with you the benefits of ClickUp Teams in this video. If you're discovering me with this video, my name is Ramsey and I've been founding Upsys, or an agency that helps businesses set up ClickUp and speed up their processes through ClickUp automations, as well as better, more solid operations. Now, without further ado, let's start up with ClickUp Teams. So I see four main advantages to ClickUp Teams. Number one is the ability to share spaces, folders, lists so much faster than doing it by assigning people one by one. Second benefit is you're gonna be able to create filters that are dynamic, which means each time someone arrives or leaves your team, all you have to do is add them or remove them from the team settings and the filters will apply to them, either if it's in dashboards or views, and I'm gonna share that with you later. Next, you can notify a whole team instead of just mentioning people one by one, either in ClickUp chat or comments. And the last thing you can do is you can create automations and templates with those teams, which is super beneficial. If you don't know yet who will do the task, but I will share with you some things to be cautious about when it comes to assigning teams to tasks. But before I can do all of that, I'm gonna have to create my teams in ClickUp. And I'm gonna create some example teams in my ClickUp demo workspace. So we're gonna get there to ClickUp and I'm already in my settings, but let me show you again how it works. So we're gonna go here to the top left and go to settings. And here we're gonna go to teams. So if we get there, we already have a few demo teams that I have created. I can add or remove those teams so I can delete them if they're no longer useful. I can create a new one as well. So say I'm creating a new team and they're, for example, a content team. So they take care of the whole content creation. I can then add members to this team. So this means every time someone comes for content creation, for example, they could be video editors, graphic designers, whatever, and they're working on my projects and my delivery projects for my clients. I won't have to manually add them to the spaces where they have to work. All I have to do is add them here to the team. So for example, say Diane, April, Ina, they're all part of the content team. So if I get back to the workspace and say these people have to work on the delivery 2.3 and they have to work uh, for the ongoing projects. I don't want to share the whole access to the whole space with them, but I know they will have to work on the ongoing projects. So I'm going to right click on the ongoing project folder and then click into sharing and permission in the very bottom. And all I have to do is bring in the content team and you will see that people will be assigned with full edit access to this whole folder. And now they have access to the whole folder. So instead of having to assign them one by one and remembering who's part of the content team again, all I have to do is just give access to the whole team. If I want to give read access, for example, to another team, say the marketing team, I can just give them a view only access. I don't have to remember who are the three people in the marketing team again, opening it up. Oh yeah, true, it's Diane, Lucas, and Ina. And even if there are overlaps, so if you have people part of one team and people part of another team, the highest access will always have priority. So if Diane is in both marketing and content team, they will have full edit access. So basically it saves you the headache of remembering who's part of which team and giving access one by one, especially if this team changes, right? Because you might have your content team, then you bring in some freelancers as guests and instead of giving them access to the specific list one by one, all you have to do is add them to the team in the settings I've shown before. And if they ever leave, you can just remove from the team or remove them from ClickUp and they will not have access anymore. So this just lets you give access in bulk somehow. 
So let's leave this. And that's the very first part of ClickUp Teams and the sharing benefit. To me, that's the most important benefit, but sometimes you might find it useful to use it in filters. And you could use it in all kinds of filters because you could use it in a view, for example, and say we're here and we want to know what to do. And we have a few tasks and they have say like a few assignees, which are actually part of those teams. So I'm going to assign like some of those to some people and some of those to other people, just like for the sake of this demo. And some will be part of my team and some won't be part of my team. So we will see how this behaves. So I've just assigned some tasks. I'm not part of the content team. So I should be hidden if I get to the filter here on the top right and only keep the tasks where the assignee is part of the content team. If I do this, then I only see the tasks where the assignees are part of the content team and I don't have to bother about who are the assignees of the content team again, because my filter is dynamic. And what that means is that if I get back to the settings here and add myself into the team, so let's add me to the content team. Okay, cool. Then let's get back to the workspace here. I'm back again because I'm dynamically part of that team. And this applies to this view, but you could use it in a workload view if you wanted to, and just have a filter on a certain team in the workload view. You could use it in a dashboard. So if you were to do a best practices dashboard, I only want to see the best practices, say for the content team or the tasks where a member of the content team is assigned. This dashboard is actually a mess, but it's fine. And here I can say assignee is part of the content team. And what that means is it will drastically change the filters and the tasks. And I will only focus on the actual assignees of the content team, which makes my dashboard more targeted if I wanted to. So this ability to have dynamic filters based on team members is the second benefit of ClickUp Teams. Now, third benefit is notifying the right people in your teams. So what that means is that if you're using ClickUp Chat, for example, and you have a channel, say this is my marketing channel. If I want to mention someone from marketing, all I have to do is click add and say marketing big Q1 meeting in the main room. And I don't have to mention everyone from marketing. They'll all get a notification because they're part of this team and they'll all be notified. And I don't have to care about who's part of marketing as long as I've set the marketing team properly. Now, same principle. If I get to the delivery here, I'm working on a client and I don't know, it's an emergency. Someone from content has to take care of it. And I can just open up the task and say like content or even like assign the task to content and say, this is super urgent to do today. Can anyone assign themselves as Diane is PTO for example. So that means is that anyone from the content team will get the task in their ClickUp inbox and they can just take care of looking up at the task and assigning themselves. So if I get to the ClickUp inbox, I can just open it up, see this notification coming, and I can just assign myself because I'm somehow part of this team and just like remove Diane and then take care of it myself. And that's it. All I had to do as a manager is mention the whole team. So this is super handy for chat. This is super handy for notifications. And the last use case where I see teams to be super, super useful is when it comes to having templates and having pre-built frameworks around teams. So first case is obviously a template. So if you have a template of marketing task. I think we have some here. So if I browse my template, okay, this one's cool. We have a blog post template. So I'm going to trigger it and bring it up. And this template has an assignee, but what if the content creator changes from template to template? So what I could do is assign the content team to the task instead of a specific person. Uh, I could even assign it to the whole set task. I can just select them and go into assignees and just pick the content team and then right click on the template, go to templates, update and pick the blog post template. I'll click next and save. So what happens now is that any new blog post that I have to do, I can just call out the template. So just going to delete this one, call it out the template in here and click use. 
And what happens is that it will create the template with the right content team. Now it's better than nothing to have a team assigned to a task, but I don't recommend you to keep teams in tasks. And this is a very bad practice. As soon as the task is created, you wanna make sure you reassign the task to someone. So you just click the little circle here and you reassign the task to the actual people that are gonna take care of it. So this way, you're making sure that, let's do the same for those, assign to someone here. You're making sure that basically this task is handled by an actual human and that there's accountability and you're just not saying, okay, content team's gonna do it. And then nobody sees it in dashboards, in the filters you've created for them. Nobody can see what's to do using me mode. So I recommend you as soon as the template is created to reassign the task to an actual person. But for templates, it's better than nothing to have a team and actually have like some pre-built framework around a task. Now, same applies to automation. So if I go here to automate, you could say, as soon as I change the task type to a video, for example, so this is just a task type that I've created myself, but a video is a type of content. So I could say, as soon as I change the task to video, then please change the assignee to the content team. So this already puts an assignee. It's better than nothing because there's people behind the content team. But obviously, if I were to like say, okay, video post and say, okay, this is not a task. This is a video. So I'm going to change it to task type video. The automation is going to work. So if I open that up, it should assign the task to the content team. That's cool. But then again, reassign it to the actual person that's going to take care of the video when you do your task planning on a weekly meeting or whatever. So it's important to bring accountability. Teams are not a solution to circumvent, to go around accountability. Teams are just a solution to speed up your processes, to speed up your sharing, to speed up your mentions and your communication, but still bring it accountability. Now, this is a way to conclude this video by just showing you the whole benefits of ClickUp Teams. This is a very simple feature, yet every time I go to a client workspace, I find it's underused and people actually share access to people one by one instead of adding them to a team or just create filters with picking the people person by person. And imagine you're doing it on 10 people that are part of the team. It starts to become hectic and you lose control because you might make a mistake or someone transfers from one team to another. And by just having teams and having those people behind in the team settings, you're just making sure you're in control of your ClickUp permissions and filters. If you want to go further with ClickUp, there's free content on my channel. I talk about setting up ClickUp, about ClickUp for agencies, about how to create CRM, dashboards, very advanced features, much more advanced than just ClickUp Teams. And there's also content you can download like my guides. And if you want to go any further, and if you want to really, really get to the next level with ClickUp, you can access ClickUp Master, which is my course on ClickUp. And it will show you step-by-step step how to set up your own ClickUp workspace and make sure you don't make any mistakes. Now there's also consulting. You can have a look at all the links in my description. Now, thank you for watching this video. And until then, stay productive.